the 2K Sports pregame show. Ernie Johnson joined by Shaquille O'Neal. Kenny the Jet Smith, thanks for tuning in. You're watching the NBA on 2K Sports. Tonight, we'll see the Los Angeles Clippers as they play against the Wizards in Washington. And guys, for the Wizards, they're looking to come out strong and make their mark early. They have to look at this game as a great opportunity to do just that. And guys, the fans always enjoy hearing stories from your playing days. Uh, let's talk teammates. Shaq, who were your favorite guys to play with over the years? You know, everyone loves the Shaq, and Shaq has four rings, but I'm, I'm saying it here. They all love real the life. Shaq. Yeah, everybody loves Shaq. Okay. I'm, I'm sexy and qualified. That's what Shaq's talking oh, about. I think my question anyway, was, who were your favorite teammates? Let me finish, Ernie. Let me finish. I'm quick to say, hey, I got four rings, but I could, could You not, are quick to say that. Could not do it without <laughs> Brian Shaw. Brian Shaw was a guy that always looked for me, similar with, with when how Kenny played with the team. He came down made sure I got my shots off first. Derek Fisher, we all remember the .04 shot. Rick Fox was a hustler to go out and play. Big shot Bob. Oh, wow, saved one of my so favorites, many too. Times. So he, he's won both of our favorites. Big shot Bob saved me so many times. I would probably only have one without Big shot Bob. And Nick Van Ansel, even though me and Nick didn't, didn't win together, we had a great time. Well, obviously, he said big shot. Hakeem, Sam Cassell, Robert Ory, Vernon Maxwell. But one of my favorite of all time, Chucky Brown. Oh, yeah. My favorite teammate is Chucky Brown of you all time. You didn't say Otis Thorpe? No, but he, Otis was cool. Oh, my but God. But Chucky Brown was my favorite teammate of all time, man. Guess who I would say my favorite teammates are? Who? Who's that? It's us? Oh, Ernie. Really? I thought you were going to say Thanks, another Ernie. guy who wasn't here. I'm getting choked up a little bit. Thanks for joining us. Need some tissue. Clippers coming in from out of town for this one, an interconference game today. Welcome to the Tuesday afternoon broadcast of the NBA. This is Kevin Harlan, and here with me tonight, Greg Anthony, Clark Kellogg, and Doris Burke reporting from the sideline. Ready, gentlemen? Ready? It'll be Los Angeles off the tip. Here are the five for the Clippers. Inside, it's Griffin and Jordan. Chris Paul and J.J. Redick are the guards. And it's Pierce in at the three spot. Now here's Griffin, and he connects on the jumper. The screen did the trick. Griffin's got the first points up on the board for Los Angeles. And one thing that's made such a difference to Blake Griffin's game, the improved free throw shoot. He shot a career high 73% from the charity stripe last year. The fourth season in a row that he's bettered himself in that category. Here's Reddick after the basket by Washington. Paul outside. It's Pierce on the way. Releases. Rebound by Nene. Very dangerous to leave a guy like that open. Lucky break there for the deep. Doris Burke has an update for us. Doris? Well, I had a chance to speak with head coach Doc Rivers. We talked about some of the matchups he'll be watching in this game, and he told me, quote, I'll be looking at how we deal with Marcin Gortat. He's a guy who can score in any number of ways, posting up, rolling up from outside, or rolling to the rim. And he's also a factor on the glass. Guys, Gortat might not be a household name, but he's an impact big man in this league, no question. Thanks a lot, Doris. And the thing right about Marcin Gortat, he's not a high flyer, he's not a super flexible athlete, but he's one of the best centers in the league because he's tough. And he's worked hard on developing his skills. And he always, always hustles. Yeah, and he fights for position mm. down low. A, a terrific screener, does a lot of that dirty work. And he's also very good at passing the basketball. You know, a, a lot more skilled, particularly in the pick and roll, than maybe people give him credit for. He can hurt a defense in a surprising number of ways. Talking about Gortat, he was a late second round draft choice in 2005. His first four years in the league, highly underwhelming. Now, over the last four years, he's averaged around 13 points, nine rebounds, and one and a half blocks per game. Those are good numbers. The drive by Paul. That one goes. Count it. 
<laughs> well, Merry Christmas. I mean, that was a freebie. The Wizards have gone one of three for the field to start this one so far. Jordan against Gorchot. Passed in a nay. That's in, and he found his range with that one. Now one for two. And getting back to Martian Gortat, his dad was a successful light heavyweight boxer in Poland. So clearly you see where the toughness comes from. And, and, and Martian's mom was on the Polish national team in volleyball. So you know where the blocking and ball skills come from. I guess we'd have to call him a chip off the old blocks. How about three or four from the floor to start? That's always a good sign. Wall against Paul. Wall, that's good. Wall's got his second bucket. Beautiful reverse. He got his glide on and left the D in the rear view mirror. Jordan with a screen on Wall. Paul goes in. Jordan kicks to Pierce. Back to Jordan. Four on the clock. Paul with the three. Nene pulls it in. Oh, that's a tough three-point try when you've got the defense right there. Well, he'd have to be really good to knock down a shot like that against that kind of defense. Beal can't get it to go. The shot's there for him, and he's got to take it. I don't care if he doesn't convert. That's a shot he has to continue to take. Now here's Griffin. Gorjant with the defensive effort. And you can see the defenders afraid to kind of get in his way a lot of times when he's on his way to the basket. But on that one, they were there. Here is Dub. Wing shot on the way. And Nene with the basket on the assist by Dudley. Just over three and a half minutes gone here in the first. Paul outside. Jordan the screen. Beal against Reddick. Griffin a screen on Beal. Shot off the screen. Shot clock at six. And again, no good by the Clippers. And with room like that off the pick, you have got to knock that one down. Well, you know, they did everything right, Greg. They executed. All you want is a good look at the basket. Sometimes the shots just don't fall. Now here's Pierce. Bradley Beal unable to get his shot to go. And lots of contact there. Missing the shot. He'll shoot two. Well, Paul Pierce hinted that he could hang him up soon. He had that amazing run. Has nothing left to prove in the NBA. And, and I would say, of all the players in last year's playoffs, had some of the most dramatic individual shots we have seen from one guy in a long time. Yeah, he did. And, and you, you know, you forget, he's Take done that really Take over break. the course of his entire sure, career. Sure. Just kind of funny to see him doing it in a Wizards jersey but you talked about it he's going to go down as one of the all-time greats no doubt about it so many big moments over the course of his career and also for all the kids out there the best maybe footwork we have in our game if you want to improve as a player watch Paul Pierce's footwork It's two. Well, the competitive nature was on display early in the career of Pierce. I mean, he has willed his teams to win his entire career and is baffled by anybody who doesn't want to win as bad as he does. Now here's Beal. He hasn't yet put up any points in this one. There's a chance he could have a big game if they don't DM up more tightly on the perimeter. Clippers trail by three. Ball outside. Jordan the screen and the wide open shot from Reddick. Good and Paul gets the assist. Reddick's got five. And that competitive nature that you talked about with Pierce, that's really what sets him apart. He had so many great clutch moments in the postseason. Easily one of the most clutch players in recent memory. Nane, a terrific shot on the turnaround. Six points for him. Los Angeles has gone one or two from long range in the first quarter. Paul dishes to Griffin. The feed to Jordan. Griffin a screen on Beal. And he gets the shot to fall after coming off the pick. 
A lot of space right there to get that shot off. Not a very good job of the defender getting over the top of that screen in that particular play. Now here's Wall on its way from Dudley for two, and he wills that one in, sinking right through off the back iron. The Clippers have gone five of nine from the field here in the first. Ball against Wall. Ball left side. To the middle. Here's Griffin. Power down after the assist. Let him into the lane. Wow, what a clever pass that time by Chris Paul. Last season for Chris Paul, another strong season. Yet yeah, quite a year for him in terms of media hype. Uh, he was as strong as ever on the court and off the court. And that's a great point. You know, he did kind of fly under the radar. It's hard to imagine a first-team Hall of Famer in the future could do that. But a lot of it had to do with Steph Curry yes. kind of coming on to the scene, splashing on the scene, if you will. But he is still one of the top point guards in our league. The Wizards have gone 7 of 11 from the field to begin the game. You know, for Paul, you talk about the lack of talk about him last year. Very quietly came close to the 50-40-90 club. For Los Angeles, they've gone 6 of 10 from the field in this ballgame. Misses off the left iron. The Wizards shooting very well. 58% the offense is falling right now early for them. Dudley the pass to Nanette. And another miss by Washington. Uh, the 50 40 90 club, something only elite scorers reach. And Paul came close while playing point guard. He might not get the hype he used to, but CP3 is very much still one of the best in our league. Offline from the high post. Paul's gone one of three from the field here. And Wall kicks to Beal. Nene is setting the pick for Wall. Off the pick. It's rebounded by Paul. And the D does just enough to throw off his rhythm on that shot. Jordan the screen. Redick inside the line. And that misses. That would have put him up. Outside Wall. Here's Gortat. Oh, and there's the one-handed jam. A long wind-up and a strong follow-through on that one-hand jam. He's not going to mess that one up for sure. Well, I sure hope not. Now here's Paul. Puts it up from 12. Good on the jump shot. Paul's got the game tied up here for Los Angeles. And that's just a great individual play right through the teeth of the defense. Outside wall. Back to Nene. It's hauled in by the Clippers. Now Pierce. Griffin kicks to Reddick. He feeds it to Jordan. And the bucket counts, and he's on his way to the free throw line. We'll try to make it a three point play. Those three consecutive baskets have come right at the rim. The defense had better start buckling down and tightening up. Guys, they are getting exposed in terms of their low post defense. And a new group getting ready for the Wizards. Chris Humphreys has checked in for Nene. Porter comes in for Jared Dudley. Gary Neal's checked in for Beal. And Sessions subbed in for John Wall. The Clippers also changing it up. Josh Smith, he's checked in for Griffin. And Stevenson comes in for Paul Pierce. And it's Crawford in for J.J. Reddick. They've been beating them to a lot of those loose balls and rebounds here to start. Yeah, the half and half balls are going their way, and that's really a function of effort and intensity. You know, the ball 
doesn't discriminate. Whoever goes and gets it, that's who owns it. Crawford's shot is good. And they're beginning to just flat out fall apart defensively right now, especially on the interior. Yeah, and that's four straight field goals now, Greg. They've allowed from point blank range. Can't happen. Here is Sessions following the score by Jamal Crawford. And it's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the shot. And really the defense fouling there to prevent the layup, but that's exactly what you need to do. It is. I mean, no reason to back off and give him the layup. I mean, much better off making him go to the line. Washington shooting their third and fourth free throw attempts of the game. At the line for two. And he can't get the first one. Last season at both sides of the coin for the Wizards started out very hot, but then just could not keep it going. Well, you know, the start was extremely hot. 19 and 6, which tied a franchise best that record. Um, after that, though, they played close to 500 ball the rest of the time. And the Clippers making a switch here. Aldrich has checked in. And he's good on the second. And the Wizards really struggled post All-Star break playing under 500 still though they seem to pull things together at the very end and on into the postseason. Now here is Smith for the three and Jamal Crawford hits from deep. Crawford's got five now. He can be a forgotten man in their offense sometimes but the D still has to keep an eye on. And Sessions kicks to Porter. shot is off and the Clippers will come the other way well there's no denying it the Wizards had some bumps and you mentioned that some weeks they look like a lottery team then the next they look like a title contender they knew how to make the most of their games when they did get hot though here's Sessions following the score by Josh Smith One fifty-eight left to play in the first quarter. Porter in the corner. The tray. The shot's good. Sessions making the play. Boy, that was a rugged screen set there, fellas. And the defense didn't even try to go through that. Crawford dishes to Smith. No good and tight defense there. Bothered that shot. One thirty-one left to play in the first quarter. Sessions passes to Gortat. And the layup's good off the glass. Really, the defense is helpless to stop a layup right there. Just too much of an advantage in terms of the mismatch. Crawford kicks to Aldrich. The dish to Paul. They set the screen. Six on the shot clock. Crawford outside. And it's Humphreys with the rebound. Wizards trail by three. There's a screen by Gorta. Sessions against Paul. Porter in the corner. Wide open. Another one falls for Washington. Great job of utilizing that screen and finding space to knock down the jumper. Good basketball. Paul against Sessions. Paul dishes to Smith. On the wing, Jamal Crawford. Crawford missing again. Washington's gone two of two from three-point range here in the first quarter. Sessions passes to Humphreys. There's a screen. Passes it to Neal. There's a screen by Gorta. In the corner at Sessions. Fires from the wing. He gets it up, and the rejection by Smith. One quarter in the books, and it's been a close one so far. The Clippers on top, leading by a point. And the second quarter will get underway just after this short break. DeAndre Jordan not a focal point offensively for this team, but as a defender, he understands he can make a big difference. 
Uh, I'm not really a big scorer for our team, but that's not my job. My job is to defend and rebound for our team. And, uh, you know, I've accepted my role, and I feel like I'm, you know, excelling in my role. More. Jordan, the man who knows what his job is. He likes his job, Clark. He does it very, very well. He is excelling. Yeah, he is. He may not be the NBA's defensive player of the year, but he is certainly the Clippers' defensive player of the year. Jordan's become a defensive beast, an animal defensively. And really, the thing of it is, he's still learning and growing. He's going to continue to get better, which is scary. Either team able to build much of a lead up to this point as we start the second quarter. You guys, what's your take on the Clippers so far? This is almost like a volleyball game when you watch just how many shots they blocked or altered. Well, how about this? A lot of side out for them the way they've swatted shots away. That's a volleyball term, by the way, for Yeah. Or handball. Like or yeah, handball. Yeah, either well. one of the two. They're knocking a lot away. Yeah. And a chance here presented by Gatorade to see who's on the floor, all fueled up and ready to go for the start of the second quarter. Setting the floor for the Clippers. Crawford out there with J.J. Redick. Then there's Cole Aldrich. Then there's Griffin. And it's Johnson in at the small forward position. Now here's the name. Misses the layup. Boy, for Jamal Crawford, guys, it's been a really good career. Not many guys can maintain his level of quickness after 15 years in the league. I mean, but last season, he finally started to show a little wear and tear. No, I tell you what, he earned his money on that foul. Yeah, if you're going to foul, then make sure that you don't give a chance for the and one. And back to Crawford last season, he was down in field goal and three-point percentage. Plus, he battled with a calf injury that ultimately okay, kept him out of 17, 18 Two games shots. late in the year. Yeah, Kevin, but, but his deep range spread the floor when he was out there. He still has that presence about him that you have to honor him. And, and he also hits some very timely shots a dangerous assassin who always needs to be accounted for some good numbers for reddick he has eight points and he's put one three-pointer on the board you know what though clark it wouldn't be a bad idea going forward to try to let him do a little more damage from beyond the arc jordan he's checked in for the clippers and both free throws good for reddick and, you know, J.J. Redick has shown steady improvement in his game. He entered the league as a spot shooter off the bench. Last season, he averaged over 30 minutes a game for the Clippers. He's come a long way. The Clippers trail. Riven sets the screen for Redick. Dishes it to Griffin. Redick with it. He's got nine. Misses the three. And Redick has improved every phase of his game over every year, especially in the area of efficiency. Shooting over 47% from the field last year. And, and Greg, that by far the highest in his career. Yeah, and in his mid-range jumper last year, just automatic. The turnovers per minute averaged also ridiculously low. It even improved as a defender. Bad time for these defenders to be standing around watching. Not while the ball's in his hand. Beal can't get it to go. And, and although he doesn't quite get the block, he does get the missed field goal attempt because of his ability to alter the shot. Well, almost as effective as a block. I mean, made him completely change his release point, and I think that caused the miss. And Dudley kicks to Beal. Nene, the screen. All alone. The Clippers grab the miss. I didn't see that miss coming. I mean, he's usually been money from that range. Wall against Crawford. Jordan the screen. It's Reddick on the wing. Deep two from Crawford. And that misses. That would have put him up. Here's Beal, and it's blocked. And here's Crawford. Picked by Griffin. Feeds it to Reddick. Fires the three. No luck. And it's Washington the other way. Not able to find it here in the second. He's off stride and off track just a bit after that one he had earlier. Not really his best quarter as far as scoring. Let's see if he can eventually get back on track. 
Crawford dishes to Reddick. Jordan with a screen on wall. Second shot opportunity. Jump shot is good that time. Reddick's got 11 points. Ooh, that is a tough shot. Yes, fans, Clark, and the one team they view as floppers is the Clippers. I don't like that word, but just kind of came out. Whether that is fair or not is up for debate, but it is certainly, I think, the perception. And I think there's some truth to that perception. I mean, multiple players have received fines for flopping on their roster. I mean, you can't run away from that, and the fans remember it, oh, too. Oh, they do, yes, sir. Wesley Johnson. For Washington, they've gone just two of eight shooting here in the second quarter. And for the Clippers and Floppy, part of it might just be reputation. Whenever anyone hits the deck on their team, fans might be quick to kind of condemn that as a flop. And Reddick kicks to Crawford. Oubre pulls it in. Washington's gone 3-3 three three from three-point land here tonight. Pass to Wall. In the hoop for his third make from the field. He's 3-4 for four thus far in the contest. You know, the Clippers were the darlings of the NBA as they improved and made strides, but I think the flopping has kind of diminished that now, that love affair. Being labeled a group of floppers can certainly stifle your popularity. Here's Pierce following the basket by John Wall. And so it's going to be a three-second violation out there on the defense. The Clippers shooting the sixth attempt at the free throw line tonight. And one of the weaker areas for this group only shot about 71% from the line a season ago. Yeah, a, as a group, really a dismal year for them from the line last season, guys. The free throw drops for Reddick. And, and Reddick is just an unbelievable three-point shooter. It's not just his volume. It's his pinpoint accuracy. By the end of last season, Reddick was 40% from behind the arc for his career. Jordan. Oh, and that one, no question, powered it down. Griffin created the space for that shot. Wizards trail by three. Here's Wall. He's got six. He kicks it to Nene. From 11 feet away, again, the Wizards, good for two. And for Reddick, he knew what his NBA career would be like way back in 2005. Clark, I recall him saying, I, I think I'll be a role player like 80% of the players in the league. I, I don't expect to be a star. I'll just shoot. I'll, I'll be a team player. Yeah, and he's exactly right. He was highly decorated in college, but every scout knew his strength was shooting the basketball, and J.J. knew it as well. Mm -hmm. Now here's Wall. After the miss from Crawford, shoots from the corner, and Nene with the basket on the assist by Wall. That's 12 points for Nene. Several lead changes going on here in the early portion of this. Oh! And you talk about momentum. That sort of action delivers a type of energy to your team that you just can't quantify. I, you know what? I'm going to quantify it right now, Clark. <laughs> and this is a close game, and that was something special. And, and really, in, try. In, in a game, <laughs> you guys, in a game like this, though, when you have a chance to send a message, you do. And, and boy, did he ever on that play. And that replay is sponsored by Kia, the Kia Slam Cam, giving us a great look at that one. Here's Wall. No good off the back of the rim. The Clippers in the lead. And pushing it up, here's Los Angeles. 
That's good. And every once in a while, he'll show up and give you some great moves around the hoop. Kicks it to Beal. Nene with the screen on Crawford. Wall against Reddick. Wall passes to Nene. The shot is off. Great D that time from Jordan. Clippers leading by three. It's Crawford with the drive. No good. Now shooting just 20% this game and two for 10. Well, it's just been one of those kind of games for him. Wall dishes to Oubre. Nene left side. Six on the shot clock. Rebound by the Clippers. Griffin's got his fourth rebound in this one. It just hasn't been a very good day for him, guys. They need him to start burying some of those. And this is why you need good defenders on the interior to contest shots. Yeah, Greg, making every shot a hard one, even the shots in close. And for Jared Dudley, a bit of a resurgence last season. Found a team you like playing for, played much closer to his career numbers than the year before with the Clippers. Yeah, and that's a great point. I mean, he turned back the clock in almost every category, and I think to your point, a lot of it has to do with the right, fit. Now. He's in a, a on a team a in a role that suits his talent, and I think you're going to see him continue to be consistent. And he knocks down the first one. And, you know, going back to Jared Dudley, he helps you in so many different ways. Shoots a lot of threes, yet does so efficiently. He rebounds, he passes the ball. He'll get a little physical, too. He's a valuable vet to have in your, in your locker room. Here's what Washington's going with right now. Chris Humphreys has checked in for Nene. Otto Porter Jr. comes in for Oubre. Gary Neal's checked in for Bradley Beal. And Sessions subbed in for John Wall. And, and you know what Jarrett Dudley's nickname was in college? the junkyard dog. I mean, for his toughness and, and that nose he has for the ball. Two attributes that have served him greatly here at the next level. Boy, they are passing the ball very crisply right now. They really are, and their last three buckets have come by way of an assist. Porter kicks to Sessions. Picked by Humphreys. Now the pass to Neal. He dishes it to Porter. Jumper off the screen. Scoring his third straight basket in three tries. A lot of space right there to get that shot off. Not a very good job of the defender getting over the top of that screen in that particular play. Now here's Paul to the inside. Smith gets it to go on the assist by Paul. Paul's got his fifth assist in this one. Wizards trail by three. And Sessions kicks to Porter. Pass to Sessions. The feed to Humphreys. And good. Got the friendly bounce off the right side of the rim. Sessions doing a nice job that time. Los Angeles has gone 0-2 from deep in the second. All up top. He's covered by Sessions. And again, the Clippers good for two. And so it's Washington with it. He feeds it to Porter. There's the dish to Sessions. Neal passes to Sessions. Dudley with a screen for Sessions. Feeds to Humphreys. That ball's great assist by Ramon Sessions. Sessions has got his fourth assist in this one. It's a close game here in Washington. Stevenson drives in. Rebound, Washington. You know, not only is the game neck and neck and tight, but the rebounding battle is too. Extremely close on the board. It's been brutal in terms of the physicality down low. Now here's Sessions. Still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game for him. They set the pick. Misses off the right iron. Clippers shooting in this game, 45%. Here's Pierce. That's in. He's got two made now, and he's shooting two for three. These defenders look overmatched right now, especially inside. Well, they've given up 10 of the last 12 points from close range, so I'd have to agree with you, partner. Now here's Sessions. Porter in the corner. Again, the Wizards score.
Johnson checked in for the Wizards. And the Clippers with the change here, too. Johnson's checked in. Los Angeles has gone 0-2 from deep here in the second. And, guys, the Clippers last year, they were okay against the Eastern Conference, but not spectacular. You would have thought that with how well they, they were overall, they would have just really feasted on the East. And here we go. The Wizards fast break. Here's Sessions and Washington again with the bucket. Guys, seven times the lead has changed hands here now. And we still aren't halfway through this contest yet. Yeah, and that number should easily top double figures before it's over. Now here is Smith. That's good from Johnson on the assist by Smith. Johnson's got his second bucket. Oh, great production on the interior right now. Eight straight from inside. Buffalo bully ball right there, partner. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Getting a little physical. I like yeah. that. Yeah. I like that reference. Yeah. Now, how about how he sets his man up there, runs him right into the screen, and then gets the basket. There's the pick. Passes it to Paul. Stevenson outside. Shot clock at six. Johnson goes in. A shot by Paul. Nobody around. Good. And it's Johnson with the assist that time. Nine points for Chris Paul. Washington trailing. Dish is to Porter. Now here is Gorton. D right on him. Oh, the officials are all over that one. Clearly a foul. I mean, didn't give him any choice but to blow the whistle. I mean, you got to play without fouling. The Wizards have been after free throws in this one, going three of six so far. Two shots. That free throw missing. Good on the second free throw. L.A. has gone one of four from three-point range in the second. Not a whole lot dropping out there for them. Screen by Smith. Two-second difference between shot clock and game clock. Johnson attacking. And good as it rattles through the hoop. Johnson's got six here in this quarter. Here's Neal. To the middle. There's Porter at the three, and no good trying to get that one. And so it's a close game as we wrap up the first half of basketball. Clippers lead by three. And a chance now to send you over to Doris Burke standing by on the sideline. Doris? Hi, Kevin. Well, Doc, as we get into the second half, what do you expect to see from this offense you're facing tonight? Well, they're moving the ball. They're just playing to the hot hand, and we got to expect that. So let's not let anyone get hot. That would be nice. Coach, thanks for the time. Gentlemen, back to you. Okay, Doris, much appreciated. And now for halftime. So we'll be back in just a bit to get the third quarter underway. The 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey, this has been a good game here after one half. Uh, everybody, uh, welcome back to the uh, halftime show. Ernie Johnson, Shaq, Kenny Smith. A pretty close game for the Clippers throughout the first quarter. Their field goal percentage was a robust 50% in the period, 
That's something they can hang their hat on. The second quarter was a strong effort for them as they continued to battle and they were able to close out the half in a good position. And taking a look at the Clippers, Kenny, what did you see out there? Well, quite simply, their bench showed up tonight. And when I say showed up, I'm talking about on the offensive end because they were scoring in bunches. Now, you want your reserves to just at least come in and hold the fort, but they did way more than that tonight. And over to Shaq, your take on the Wizards. I think it was their passing that's kept them in the game. You can see it in their assist numbers. They were very, very unselfish. The ball moving from side to side, guys making good cuts. It's enabled them to create a lot of chances. As long as they stay on the same page and keep working together, they got a great chance to take control of this game. And that's it for halftime as the second half is just about to get underway. See you after the game. And now the start of the second half. Neither side jumping out ahead through the first two quarters. You look at J.J. Redick, what a contribution. And he just went off in those first two quarters, guys. He's capable of doing that on a consistent basis as well. So we might see some changes from a defensive standpoint as they try to disrupt his rhythm in the second half. You know, guys, I think you've got to make some sort of change. I mean, they can't let him continue to torch him up like he has been. The talented Wall and Beal team up in the backcourt. Nene and Gortat team up in the paint. And it's Dudley in at the small forward. That's the group on the floor right now for Washington. And the basket by Pierce. And good passing, setting up a lot of these buckets right now, Kevin. That's been the key. Time dropping delights is what I call it. I, yeah, that is a nice pass. I will give you that one. Yeah, he was on the money, that's no doubt. Now, here's Wall. To the paint, here's Gortat, and stolen by Jordan. Now, here's Redick, the fast break opportunity. Pierce's shot is good. And that's the kind of play you just do not want to give up defensively. You lose the possession and give up a quick two at the other end. That's losing basketball. Especially when you can't afford to give up any buckets. That's a nice lead now. And so it's going to be a three-second violation out there on the defense. When you're talking about the greatest clutch players ever, that list needs to include Paul Pierce. I mean, he slowed down a bit, no doubt, but don't let that fool you. If you give him any kind of look at the end of the game, he'll cut your heart out. Looking back at Paul Pierce's career, Clark, so many game winners, none more impressive than his jump over Dwayne Wade in the first round of the 2010 playoffs. Yeah, you know, Shaq nicknamed him the truth for a good reason. I mean, Pierce grew up in L.A. and reportedly dreamed of playing with the Lakers. Ironic that he instead became one of the Celtics' all-time greats. Beyond the clock, Beal. But they get it back. Dudley dishes the wall. Pass to Dudley. The Wizards working the ball around now. Here's Nene. Just couldn't take the lid off. They had their chances, but came up empty. They have yet to hit a shot. A real slow start here in the second half. Griffin inside. He's guarded by Dudley. Griffin's shot is off. Wizards trail by seven. Right side wall. Let's it go from 11, and it's in off the backboard. Wall's got nine points. That one goes down, but offensively, it's one of four to start the third quarter. Now here's Paul. Nine points in the game so far. Here's Griffin. And a great assist by Paul as that one goes in. Eight points for Blake Griffin. Well, we've seen that movie a few times, haven't we? An easy bucket in the paint. Well, listless and lifeless at the defensive end. I mean, especially inside. They've really got to pick up that interior defense. Now, here's Wall. He's got nine. Dudley, no luck. Yeah, the offense scuffling a bit to start this second half. Only one for the first five. That's exactly how you win a rebound battle. Get good position and then use your strength to hold on to that position. Wall. Jordan with some nice D. Clippers leading by seven. Paul kicks to Jordan. 
Griffin against Gorjot. Griffin shot is off. The Wizards have gone only one of six in the field in the third quarter. Not how they picture the half start. All with it. He's picked up by Paul. There's a screen by Gorton. And Beal kicks to Wall. Wall with another miss. Los Angeles has gotten fewer than half of their three-pointers to go down tonight. They are four for nine. Griffin sets the screen for Paul. He kicks it to Griffin. Pierce with a wide open look. And that one goes long. Wizards trail by seven. Clark, they've been struggling here on offense. Yeah, a little bit of cotton mouth here. Dry spell for sure. Boy, that's finishing the defense there. He made a good effort on that possession defensively and then closed it out with the rebound. Now here's Griffin. Mene unable to get his shot to go. And the Clippers miss again. You know, even though he missed that three-point shot, I think the defense has to do a better job of challenging the shot. Yeah, as a coach, you can really ill afford to have those types of opportunities presented against your defense. To the paint, and Griffin slams it in. And the lead just grows on that ridiculous offensive sequence. You know, Clark, that dunk alone would have been spectacular, never mind it coming at the end of an alley-oop. Yeah, that just added more to and it. And you know, guys, right now, they're starting to flatline, just hanging on here for dear life. Well, last season, the Wizards fell off just a bit in the second half of the year. Still, like, very competitive at home. Yeah, and their strong play at home helped them weather that storm, Kevin. I mean, they ended up going 29-12 and 12 here at the Verizon Center. He's checked in for the Clippers. And Washington has possession. They trail by nine points. And Beal kicks to Ubra. The kick out to Wall. Drains it from beyond the arc. Wall's got 12. And you know that 29 Whoa. wins mark at home for the Wizards. Third best in the East. Uh, that team really likes shooting the ball here as they were a top five three-point percentage team in this building. Now here's Crawford. He has five. So the whistle blows on the shot and two free throws for the contact right there. And really the driving factor for why Washington was so good at home was their defense. I mean, they would finish with the best field goal percentage against in the entire league in their home build. You don't think of the Wizards as a lockdown team, but in the Verizon Center, that's exactly what they were. You know, you work hard all season, Greg, to try and get into the playoffs, then get a favorable first-round matchup. How about the Clippers last year? Followed those steps. They're rewarded, rewarded with the first-round matchup against the defending champions of the league, the San Antonio Spurs. And not only were the Spurs the defending champions, but they came in playing terrific basketball down the stretch, which is kind of what they are noted for. And the Clippers, though, did well, even though that was the case. Now, here's Oubre. Still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game for him. They're going to have to come up with a better matchup. This guy just too much speed. Los Angeles leading by six. Crawford passes to Paul. Kicks it to Jordan. Crawford outside. Down to five on the shot clock. Kicks it out to Paul. Let's it go. And again, no good by the Clippers. Boy, I tell you, it was a tough road for the Clippers in the playoffs. They get by the Spurs in round one in a seven-game emotional series then immediately have to go up against the Rockets in round two. Now, here's Benet. He's got 12. 
And he has slipped into a funk, Clark. You can see the confidence is shaken. Yeah, it really is. I mean, he's very much deflated. Um, the basket looks a lot smaller. Oh! Oh, yeah. oh, my goodness. He's just getting nasty on him now. Wow. Yeah, now that they've built up a lead, this is when he really breaks out those incredibly slick moves. Man, like a Ginsu knife, just slicing and dicing. Oh, that was a great angle we just saw, courtesy of Kia. Reddick with it, now defended by Oubre, and that's a foul called on Kelly Oubre. That's foul number two for him, and Washington making a change here. Humphreys checked in. Picked by Griffin. That's a two from Paul. There's the basket and make it a double-digit lead. And now a 10-point Clipper lead. Clark, they've been looking out of sync offensively. You know what? A basket here would do a lot for their confidence. Here's Oubre. Played in with a nice touch off the glass. Oubre's got four this quarter. Clippers leading by eight. Paul outside. From 12 feet out. Gorchot with the rebound. Gorchot's got his eighth rebound here tonight. And Wall kicks to Uber. There's a screen by Gorchot. Now here's Uber, guarded by Crawford. Uber can't get it to go. Here's Reddick. Shot is off. Gorjot with the defensive effort. He just has not been able to get into that groove yet, guys. But as a whole, it hasn't affected them too much. Here's Ubre. Blake Griffin pulls it in. Griffin's got his seventh rebound of the game with that last one. The pass to Reddit. Jordan with the screen on Beal. And Reddit kicks to Jordan. He dishes it to Griffin. Shot clock at five. And again, it's the Clippers missing. Wizards trail by eight. Now Wall. He's got 12. It's Beal on the wing. Shoots the three. They get it back. Back to Wall. Inside. And it's Gortat, that time on the assist by Wall. And it's nine points for Marching Gortat. Well, guys, how good a playmaker is John Wall? Second in assist last season to Chris Paul. Uh, Clark, he almost finished number one. Yeah, and the only difference really is that Paul was a little more efficient than Wall. Paul had a four to one assist to turnover ratio. Wall was only at 2.5 to one. So some of that is Paul's experience. And the one thing about John Wall, he has that air of confidence that only the truly great ones possess. He's a fearless attacker, tremendous vision and creativity, a true floor general, not just an athlete masquerading as a point guard. some changes. Porter's checked in for Oubre. Gary Neal comes in for Bradley Beal. And Sessions subbed in for John Wall. The Clippers also making some changes. Cole Aldrich, he's checked in for Jordan. Smith comes in for Blake Griffin. And Lance Stevenson subbed in for J.J. Redick. To the paint. Stolen away. Here's Neal, defended by Paul. Gort's out with a screen on Paul. And Sessions kicks to Humphreys. Smith with some nice deep. And, you know, talking about John Wall, we saw him improve his pacing last season. Sure, he still played at rapid fire speed at times, but he also seemed to have a better understanding of when to pull it back and when to speed it up. Better change of pace in how he went about his game. 
Burge out with the screen for Sessions. There's Neal with the three. Rebound by Smith. Clippers leading by eight. Stevenson dishes to Paul. They set the pick. Down low. And count the basket. He was fouled, and he's going to the line for one more. You know, the defense has got to do a much better job of fighting over those screens. And, Greg, especially when the ball is in his hands. I mean, come on now. You know he doesn't miss too many open looks like that. In a moment now to quickly take a look at the offensive approach for the Clippers. Guys, their play close to the hoop has been great all game. Yeah, but Clark, the other thing that sticks out for me, the number of assists they made over the course of this game. Well, nobody really knew, Greg, what to make of Washington going into last year's playoffs. They came out strong with a big sweep against a pretty good Raptors team. Yeah, how about taking them down four straight? And it was the first time a team has swept an opponent without home court advantage since 2011. Also was the first sweep for the Wizards in franchise history. Mm. Okay, gentlemen, two shots, two shots. And the first one at the line is good. And in the second round, the Wizards continued to be a tough opponent. I mean, they went up two to one on the Hawks, but were unable to keep the series lead. A lot of close, heartbreaking losses for them in that series. Both free throws, good from Gortat. And the Hawks would ultimately take down the Wizards last year in the postseason. John Wall and his injury were a big turning point in that matchup. And, and all those buzzer beaters for both teams made it one of the most interesting series of the postseason. Wizards trail by 11. To the middle. It's tipped. Stevenson with it. And there's the feed to Paul. Crawford, no one around him. A three-pointer off the mark. 157 left in the third quarter. Neal passes to Humphreys. Picked by Humphreys. Here's Sessions. And the shot no good, a bit short. I'll tell you what, for what's really a, an elementary shot, he looked a little nervous on that release. Crawford kicks to Stevenson. And a miss there on the triple. Washington's gone into a slump here from three-point range, shooting just one of five here in the third. Here's Sessions, and he drops in the layup off the glass. Sessions has got his second basket. I tell you, he has some impressive moves in his repertoire. That's as good as it gets, but just one of many. The drive by Paul. Rebound, Washington. Humphreys has got five rebounds tonight. Wizards trail by nine. And Sessions kicks to Neal. Picked by Humphreys. Shoots off the screen, and Aldrich sends it back. And the dunk by Humphreys. 55 seconds left in the third quarter. And here is Paul. He's got 13. It's Crawford with the drive. Pass to Aldrich. And foul called as he misses. He'll go to the line and shoot two. That's on Marcin Gortat. And guys, one thing that was obvious to me, last year the Wizards really matured as a team. I mean, they played as if they expected to win instead of a group kind of coming into their own. I thought they just showed a lot more composure and maturity on the court. As you said, the Wizards did look more mature last year on the floor with their play. They made sure to add veterans to achieve that. Right? And not just any veteran, but a future Hall of Famer in Paul Pierce. I mean, his presence on the team, I think, really is what propelled them to achieve new heights. And it also went beyond just Paul Pierce. That roster had a combined 490 playoff games. And, and that playoff veteran leadership, I felt, really helped this young core to grow. Inside, inside. Now the dish to Pierce. He feeds it to Aldrich. 
Breaks a big height bounce and goes in. Aldrich has got six. An open jump shot there, and their D not putting up any resistance today. Here's Neal. He's guarded by Stevenson. Neal dishes to Sessions. One second left. That misses. Would have counted had it gone in. Well, through three quarters of play, down double. And the final period of play just about to start. Clippers leading by 10. And on the floor for the Clippers here in the fourth. Chris Paul and J.J. Redick are the guards. Inside, it's Griffin and Jordan, and it's Pierce in at the three. Griffin passes to Redick. Pick by Griffin. Jumper off the screen. Bounces high off the rim and drops. Redick's got the fourth quarter started here with a bucket for the Clippers. And Wall kicks to Porter. Nene setting the pick for Wall. Feeds to Nene. Looking to get it going. Great D that time from Griffin. The Clippers shooting straight 49% from the field. Ball's knocked loose. Here's Beal. And the bucket counts, and he's on his way to the free throw line. Try to make it a three-point play. Great pass. John Wall is really good at finding the open man. And we've all seen how dominant Bradley Bill can be. The third overall pick in the 2012 draft. He's already had a solid young career, but still plenty of room to grow. Talking about Bradley Beal's potential, it's not just the shooting, it's also the passing, and you really don't think of him as a passer, but for such a young two guard, he's extremely unselfish, averaged over three assists a game over the past two years. And, and the, the true stars of our game feature versatility. And here's a guy that has also Great tremendous point upside as a rebounder. I mean, how about getting seven boards almost a game the one year he was in college? So he understands the importance of impacting other areas. I mean, last season he had his highest steals average of his career, and, and everything's upside with this young man. The sky's the limit. Excellent point. And out of bounds as the Wizards gain possession. You know, that's hard to explain that way. I mean, I, I guess he thought he had more room than he did. Gortat's checked in for the Wizards. Final quarter of play, about a minute and a half off the clock into it. Here is Wall. Nene, the screen. Beal gets a wide open look. And good, coming off the assist by Wall. Wall's got his seventh assist of the game with that last one. Clippers leading by six. Now here's Paul. Outside, Pierce. They get it back. Griffith, and that one is stuck right through. And, and Kevin, plays like that are really the reason they've got a nice lead right now. Just a great job on the glass. And Greg, the jam and the follow gets their whole bench jumping. <laughs> Clark, look at them. They are really into it. Yeah, they sure are. That's a little salt in the wound there. I mean, they take a miss and turn it into one of the plays of the game. That hurts. Beal can't get it to go. Los Angeles has gotten off to an 0 for 2 start from downtown here in the fourth quarter. Paul kicks to Jordan. Back to Paul. Just five on the clock. Pierce for three. And right on through for another basket. He's got five made on five of nine shooting. His shooting has been outstanding here. Definitely one of the reasons they're up in this game. 
So far, his shot selection has been questionable. A lot of tough, contested shots. If I'm coaching, I might sit him down for a minute. Let's go over to the sideline with Doris Burke. Thank you, guys. I got a chance to hear what Randy Whitman was saying to the team. He hasn't been happy with their shot selection. He told them, we're forcing things out there, guys. Space the floor, make the extra pass, work for the open shot in the flow of our offense. We'll see if they heed that advice, Kevin. Beal dishes to Nene. Land soft on the front of the rim and drops. He has such a nice touch for a big man. Yeah, and they've got to figure out a way to get a bigger body on him because if they don't match up his size, then he's going to continue to work him over the rest of the game. Risky pass in a situation like that. Very lucky that wasn't a steal. Fortunate to get it through. I thought he was headed the other way with that one. It's Ruddick on the wing. Rebound by the Wizards. And now Beal pushing it up and no one back to stop him. No doubt that is within his range. Well, I would hope so. He's a pro, and it was only a one-footer. Come on, now. Ball outside. They set the pick. Passes it to Griffin. Dishes it to Reddit. Six to shoot. Fires from 14. Griffin can't get it to go in. Wizards trail by seven. And Wall kicks to Beal. At the elbow, Gortat. Rebound by the Clippers. Paul's got his fourth rebound in this one. Reddick passes to Paul. Griffin sets the screen for Paul. A shot by Griffin. Nobody around. Good, and Paul gets the assist. 16 points for Blake Griffin. For Washington, they've gone four of eight in this fourth quarter, shooting at even 50% from the field. Pass to Beal. Unloads. And it's Griffin with the rebound. Well, I tell you what, that's too good a look to pass up there. Even though it didn't go, that's one you got to take. <laughs> Is it me, or does it just feel like he gets every rebound that comes up? Well, he practically has gotten every one that's available. A 20-plus rebounding game is not something we get to see very often, Greg. And that one's good. And that's 13 points here for Beal. It's really been a tale of two halves, guys. A slow start, but this quarter, he has really been the man. And for Marcin Gortat, he was such a good fit for the Wizards last season. Actually, the last two seasons. You know, he, he runs the floor very well for his size. A terrific finisher, solid in the pick and roll, can make the mid-range. You know, he's been one of the more consistent centers in our league. in for the Clippers. Los Angeles leading by seven. You know, getting back to Gortat, he signed that five-year, $60 million contract a couple of years back. Raised some eyebrows at the time because he's not a supreme athlete, but his size, effort, and refined skill set have made him worth it so far. And talking about Gortat, I, I like what he can do for you defensively. 
doesn't really have a vertical, but uses his length and timing to alter shots. And he moves his feet well enough to close out on shooters and also cover the pick and roll. So solid and complete in terms of a frontline player. He's perfect from the line this time. Clippers were so strong on the road last season. They led the league, Clark, in field goal percentage while on the road. And actually, actually, they scored more points away from Staples than in it. Especially down the stretch, Kevin. Oh. I mean, they finished the regular season with eight straight road wins to get home court advantage in the first round. Superb. Crawford's shot is good. Despite his ineffectiveness, Jamal the team Crawford. has found other scoring options, which you have to have when one of your main guys is struggling. Outside wall, he kicks to Beal. Out to the right wing. Here's Nene. Nene can't get that one to fall. And the Clippers with those eight road wins at the end, you mentioned, that pushed their road record to 26 and 15. That was second best in the league. Also set a franchise high for road wins. Jordan can't get it to go. You can see he just rushed that a little bit. Lost the focus, I think. Wall dishes to Nene. Kicks it to Beal. Just five on the clock. The Wizards need to get a shot off here. Gord's hot misses. You know, what's amazing about the Clippers on the road last year, guys, was the context. I mean, they had a bunch of back-to-back -back games and went 16-4 and four on the back end of back-to-backs. 11 of those came on the road. One made three for him for the game. Does he focus closer in? Let's see. Dudley with it. Now Pierce defending. Takes it from 10. It's good, and the Clipper lead is get down to nine in the bucket from Gorzak. Los Angeles has gotten just one of four three-pointers to go down for them here in the fourth. Ball outside. Out left to the wing. Six on the shot clock. And that one's good. 18 points for Blake Griffin. And he could be the guy to put this game out of reach. And there's the pass to Gorton. Ball against Wall. Nene with the screen on Paul. Now here's Beal. He's guarded close. No good off the front iron. Clippers leading by 11. Paul kicks to Crawford. Good, and Paul gets the assist. Crawford's got four points now in the quarter. I love the offensive execution on that possession. Wall against Paul. Wall passes to Beal. Launches a three, and the Wizards hit again from deep. Great quarter for him at the offensive end, trying to will his team back in the game. Wall against Paul. And they double up Paul. It's Pierce on the wing. He's guarded by Dudley. The shot by Pierce will not go. He's been wayward and just off on about everything he's put up in this period. Now Dudley, he was all alone on that one. Dudley's got it back down to a single-digit deficit for Washington. For Los Angeles, they've gone seven to 16 from the field here in the fourth. That's about 43 percent. Paul for three, and yes, sir, that one drops. This guy will really make you pay if you leave him enough room outside. Washington's gone 6 of 11 when they've taken the three-point shot tonight. Very respectable. The feed now to Beal. The nay, the screen. On its way from Dudley for two. Jordan with the rebound. Los Angeles leading by 11. Paul left side. He dishes it to Pierce. Uses the glass to finish the layup.
Pierce has got 10 points here in the second half. Well, check out that assist. That's a pair of teammates that are clearly on the same page. Andre Jordan has been extremely productive over seven years. That makes it even more unbelievable that there was some question, Clark, as to his commitment to basketball coming into the league. Yeah, you know, on talent and athleticism alone, he would have been a top 10 pick for sure, but he slipped to the second round, and he's made good on it, though. Wizards trail by 13. And watching DeAndre Jordan, he's really refined his game over the years without losing the athleticism. He's that rubbery, long-limbed athlete that transcends age. And so far, I've seen zero drop-off in his leaping ability and quickness, but no question he's improved his skills and IQ. Jordan with a screen on wall, and Chris Paul picks up the foul. That's his first foul. Yeah, but in the first half, he was just purely flawless as a ball secure. But that certainly hasn't been the case here in the second half. Ball against Paul. Right side wall. Pass to Beal. Wizards passing it around. And that one's good. Dudley's got four points in the quarter. And talking about DeAndre Jordan, he is displaying an energy level that many scouts wondered if he had. Let's face it, he underachieved a bit in his one year in college. He knows that. But when it's come time to do it at the highest level, DeAndre has risen to the occasion. Crawford's shot is good. Jamal Crawford. 144 left in the fourth quarter. Wall dishes to Gortat. Can't get it to go. Good D by Jordan. Crawford kicks to Paul. Wants to get it to Pearson Dubs. Good on the shot. Pierce has got the lead up to 13 now for Los Angeles. For the Wizards, this one's not looking good. All with it. Chris Paul covering. It's Wall with the drive. Nene with the screen on Crawford. Crawford against Beal. Oh. There he comes, and there he goes. Look at him punish that check, rack. Check out Ooh. the fellas. Check out his teammates over on the bench. So they are going crazy. And now as the clock ticks down, this is going to end up as a solid victory here for Los Angeles. Starting five must have been happy to get so much help from the reserves in this game. Yeah, I'm sure they were. They had not only lightened the load, the bench guaranteed and actually produced the win. They sure did. Just a quality win, and, and you look at the box score and some really good numbers for Paul. He just looked like an orchestrator out there. His teammates kept running to the open spot, and he found them time and time again. They're looking to trim the deficit to single digits. And Wall kicks to Dudley. Let's the three fly. The shot no good. The Clippers go the other way with it. On the wing, Jamal Crawford. And, uh, oh, here, there's a whistle. He was going up for a layup, and while it looked like there was some contact, I wasn't sure they were going to call it a foul shot or not, but sure enough, they have. So he'll head to the free throw line. At the line for two. Shooting two. Shooting two. That free throw, no good. Oh. 
and he sinks the second. And that should be enough to get the job done, even though he didn't get all of them. Guys, a comeback probably not in the cards at this point. Yeah, unless something dramatic and drastic occurs. Yeah, I think you can put a fork in it. Shot and game clock separated by five. Humphreys kicks to Ubre. Shot clock at five. And so he earns a trip to the line. Officials saw the contact, and he'll shoot two. He's off on the first. And he sinks the second. Nine seconds left to play here in the fourth. Stevenson outside. So it's Los Angeles winning this one easy. A solid win on the road for them. This building was dead silent by the time GA this one wound down. And that's what you want to do. Take the crowd out of it by crunch time. Don't give them any chance to lift their team up at the finish. And a chance now to send you over to Doris Burke, standing by on the sideline. Doris? Well, gentlemen, I'm here with Paul Pierce. And tonight, Paul, was it the defense that helped create the separation in this game? Yeah, I really thought we took control with the defense. We moved the ball, we kept our turnovers down, and, you know, we were able to keep the lead and win the game going away. It all came together for you, Paul. Thanks for the time. Gentlemen? Doris, thank you as always. And that about wraps it up for Greg Anthony, Clark Kellogg, and Doris Burke. This is Kevin Harlan. Thanks for watching the NBA presented by 2K Sports. We'll see you next time. The 2K Sports Post Game Show. Welcome back, everybody. Ernie Johnson here along with Shaq and the Jet as we present our Jordan player of the game, Chris Paul. Not too often you see a guy crack 15 assists in a game. That's how in tune he was. Just great anticipation, great understanding of every defense that they threw at him. Exactly the kind of game a team wants from its point guard. You know what? He's a total package as a floor general. It may not be an official ranking for the best leaders in the league, but if there was, CP3 would be right at the top of the list. And that's it for our broadcast here tonight. But we're just getting started on a new season in the NBA for Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny the Jet Smith. Kevin Harlan and the entire 2K sports crew. I'm Ernie Johnson. We'll see you again soon.